We need to do some maintenance on our Tormach. It's been a long time. We were gonna do it at the old shop, then we were moved. Now I'm gonna wait for the 440 to show up because then I've got an extra mil in case I screw something up during the maintenance. So what I thought was, before we do that, let's, let's see how the Tormach's doing. Let's do an accuracy test for accuracy and for service finish. So this, I, I'm actually excited to do this. I really don't know how it's going to turn out. What I want to do is take this chance as well in Fusion 360 to do a soup to nuts, very thorough tutorial. So if you're interested in only the cutting and accuracy part, there's a link below on, on how you can sort of skip forward. But I think it'll actually be exciting. I know some folks want to see everything, including you know, post-processing and the USB stick and, and skip nothing. So with that, let's dive in. We've got a new part here. It is a rectangle, so we're going to hit R for rectangle. If you didn't know that, you hover over that, you'll see the R shows up as a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to click on this plane, and I'll just click right here once, drag out a little, and then I can type in 2, tab, 6.5. Tab again if you need to. Enter twice. Enter once, sorry. That gives me my part. Q, we'll do press pull, click once to select it, and negative one for the height. Got our rough stock. Now I'm going to do something that's a little bit odd for how you model a parametric CAD, which is I'm gonna extrude that whole thing down, then build it back up. So click on R again, click on this plane, my, it'll snap to, and control with the middle mouse wheel will let me get over, drag the part over, and like so. Q to press pull, negative 0.5. Oops, I, did, I hit fill it somehow. Q to press pull, there we go, negative 0.5. Now I know that's, I know some of you are gonna have a fit about that. It's, it's, I think it's a good way to think about it, especially as a beginner. We want to put a pocket uh, extruded up and a pocket extruded down. So we'll do a circle on the right. So C for circle, click here. I want to dimension its location. So I'm actually just going to hit L instead to create a line. You see I snap to the center with that triangle and we'll come over 1.75. Enter twice. Click on the line and choose construction. Now I can hit C, maybe, I guess I gotta click here, C, there we go. And now I can do 1.5. Q to press pull, select it, negative 0.5. Do a rectangle on the left, same thing, L to dimension a line, snap to 1.75. Click construction. Now I want the rectangle to be centered on that point. So we'll, we'll, instead of hitting R, we'll go to rectangle, center rectangle. Click on the center point and we'll do 1.5, tab 1.5, enter. Oops. Q to press pull, click 0.5. Yes, I know I could have added the rectangle when I extruded that face down two steps ago, but I like this way as a basic way. So that's all we've got to do for our part. If we want to check those dimensions, we can hit the I key for measuring, click that, and we see it's 1.5 diameter, 1.5 there. Great. Model cam. Start with a setup. Uh, that would be fine, but instead of having the uh, XY center in the Instead of having the XYZ in the center of the part, let's move it to the back left corner. So we'll change origin to selected point. And, well, I just did it. I didn't have to click. That's kind of odd. Click OK. And now we'll start with a facing up 2D face. We're going to use our Superfly tool 47. Done. 2,500 RPMs, 15 inches a minute. Awesome. We'll show you on the machine how we uh, set the height. We're going to actually set it to take a few thou. But again, we'll do that on the machine, not here. Click OK. There's our toolpath.
Now we've got to remove a bunch of material and you probably were going to go to the 2D adaptive because that's what we used to do as well. 2D adaptive clearing, great thing, forget about it. Move over here to the big boy world, 3D adaptive clearing. Folks, this thing is bonkers. Click on it, we're going to use our shear hog because that's what you do when you got a lot of aluminum to remove. And this is where I don't love those filters. I know they try to help, but they don't. 30, uh, 49 and we'll run this at 4,000 RPMs and we'll bump it up to 55 inches a minute because that's what I know I can run it at and that's what I'll want to be running it at, especially when we get the Tormach maintenance done. Geometry, don't click anything. Heights, don't click anything. Passes, don't click anything. Now, um, actually, I'm sorry, I lied. We are going to re remove the axial stock, so we're not going to leave anything on the floor. We are going to leave some on the side walls because the side walls are what we're going to measure when the part is done, and that's important, so we'll, we'll clean those up in a second. Click OK. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the whole point of the 3D, which is to take multiple depth surfaces. I wanted it to do this pocket. Usually, when you have that issue, you want to check out your ramp. And my normal go-to option or test is to reduce the diameter. We'll go down to like 0.5, and I bet you that'll fix it because it needs a smaller. Yep, exactly. So now you can see it's going to ramp in there. Last thing I want to do is I do want to adjust my heights, uh, my depth of cut, sorry, passes. So optimal load, we'll say 0.45 on the width, but I only want to go down 0.25 on the depth. Climb it. And I think that we are now good. The super, uh, sorry, the shear hog isn't a finish tool though, and especially on the floor of this part, it's not going to leave a great finish and wouldn't actually matter for what we're trying to do with measuring the dimensions of these two uh, features, but yeah, I like that. So we're going to do another 3D feature called horizontal. Uh, we would normally use tool 11, but I broke it. We will just instead choose tool 32, which will be fine. It's just a little bit uh, smaller diameter, so it'll take a few more passes. And horizontal is going to look for horizontal faces and clean them up. Now, what we do want to do here is add stock to leave of the radial of, you know, say 5,000, because we, again, we don't want to come up to the edges of these pockets yet. We're going to do that separately. Click OK. <laughs> Look at that. Awesome. But we already faced off the top here, right? So why are we going over that again? So to get rid of that, I'm just going to do geometry, sorry, heights. And we'll say the heights will start at point one below the top. And that should strike this thing from the code. Yep, perfect. Now we will finally clean up those two features. So 2D contour. Same tool, that's fine. We'll select this face, we'll select that face, and passes. We'll try this repeat finishing pass. That'll do the same pass twice as a spring pass to clean up with tool deflection. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but let's try it. And the other thing we're going to do is a trick somebody taught me is if you see right now, the, the tool path for this pocket is, or this, uh, embo this boss square is going to run along the floor of the part, which means in theory the tool is going to be touching both the side where it's cutting and just a barely but touching the bottom. You don't want it to touch the bottom. Come up a half a thou or a thou. No one's ever going to see it and it means it's only going to be cutting on the side and it's going to give you, in theory, uh, less pressure on the tool that can compromise accuracy and, and finish. Someone comment below if I'm full of hot air on that, but actually makes sense, sense to me. So on passes, we will say stock to leave. We'll just leave one thou of axial, no radial. Great. Uh, now in theory we're done, but uh, because I want to measure this with a set of mics, let's get rid of any sharp edges right here. What's cool is how easy Fusion 360 makes it to chamfer. 2D, contour, I'll choose tool 25, which is my chamfer tool. 
click OK. 1500, and we're actually going to reduce this down. 15 inches is a little bit fast for that tool. 10 inches a minute. And geometry, just click here. And if you look under passes, it already selected chamfer. And if you don't know what the, some of these windows mean, just let your mouse hover over and look. For edges that are not already chamfered, this is the final width of the chamfer. Awesome. We don't even need to have a chamfer in the CAD, even though it would be easy to do that because it's integrated CAD. So we're just going to say 20.02. And chamfer tip offset, you always want something here because you don't want to be cutting with the very tip of the tool. We'll do 20 thou as well. And heck, why, well, here, we'll do it this way. I'm excited to show you guys. So there you can see, we'll do a simulation. No stock play. You can see it's giving us a chamfer. Perfect, just like so. And you can see we're not cutting with the tip of the tool. I'm happy. And then, and then the other thing I love, and this is something that former CAM software may not have done as well, which is so freaking nice, is let's say we want to chamfer this edge here. All you got to do, click it. You're done. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Why does that work? It works because under the heights, the bottom height is the selected contour. So it basically can take one operation and deal with multiple heights. This is huge for spot drilling and drilling where you want to spot on different planes and you don't want to create seven different friggin' operations. Very happy. That's it. Let's run a simulation. Turn stock on this time. Click play. Mm -hmm. Make sure the shear hog is okay. We'll see. That might be pushing it a little. Uh, I think we'll be okay. Well, worst case, we got to do it again. It's a pretty good removal rate, though. And you'll certainly hear it. It's going to make some noise. Okay. Second pass. Good. We'll see how it does, too, on this ramp in. It's only a two degree, so that should be okay. Again, we'll see. Here's that cleanup. Again, I wish I had a bigger diameter tool that would make it it would make it better to do that. You don't want to use the superfly because the superfly is not meant to cut up against shoulders like that. Now we're doing the final cleanup. Clean up chamfer, chamfer. Now one of the things I wanted to point out is one of the things I've missed is you being able to simulate from here. So like right click and simulate with but jump up to that point which you could in, in Sprout Can, which was great. And I'm pushing the folks at Fusion 360 to get this happening, but because uh, obviously this doesn't help you at all. So what you do is you click Setup, simulate the whole thing, click Play. But what you can do is drag this thing forward, you know, say to like right here. And that's a way to sort of fast simulate. Not perfect, but gets it done for now, especially if you've got a job with a lot of operations. Let's go make some chips.